I'm Brent Livestead with PFI Speed, and this is how I got fined $180,000 from the EPA. All right, guys. Cool little letter I got today from uh, the Environmental Protection Agency. We had actually flown out to um, Glamis, and we did some stuff with Cletus and everybody out there in Side by Side Blog. And then from there, we went up to California and we saw Amelia Hartford. And I was helping her get her Prius running on a Honda K series. We built the engine, turbocharged it. And uh, while we were doing that, Jamie here at the shop calls me up and he says, Hey, brother, we just got a letter from the EPA. And uh, they want, you know, they want all our information. They want, you know, what cars we're tuning, whose cars we're tuning, what parts we're selling. You know, I wasn't sure what it was, honestly. It didn't seem to worry me that much. It was just, I, you know, when you're running a business for so long, it's like you have things that just come up and you just take care of them and you just, you know what I mean? And I thought, you know, maybe they were trying to track what, was, what parts were being sold and that kind of thing and get a handle on those things. So we supplied the information and we did all that. And then uh, it was probably six months later, it was literally uh, a few days before we went on Rocky Mountain Race Week, um, I had got a letter that said, you pay us $18,000 now or in 30 days you owe us 180000 It was like, what? And you're reading this paperwork and it's, it showed we sold 30 Honda ECUs off our website. So it's not, they didn't come to our building, you know, and I didn't make these products. I literally sold them um, to some clients. And I would still have to sign, a, you know, some form or something that said I couldn't modify cars. And, you know, and this is my livelihood. This is what I do. And I made that video just right off the cuff on our on our channel. Um, really, just I was so frustrated. I, I, I honestly couldn't believe it. And I still can't believe that's that it came to that. But, um, you know, because it, it I mean, it it literally was like the mob to me. It felt like the mob came in, shake me down for some money. And then I pay them maybe a year or two down the line, they're back, you know, to get their next check. And then the next thing, I mean, it literally felt like that kind of letter and that kind of intent. So I really couldn't believe it. I, I'm still, still pretty dumbfounded about it. It's, it blows my mind that that's where this world is, has come to. Um, picking on little shops selling, selling things online. I feel like I'll have a SWAT team here, you know? Um, that's, been a, that's been one way these guys come at some of these shops. And these aren't big shops, but they'll, they'll swoop in with a SWAT team, hold everybody out on the curb, they'll comb every car in the shop. Um, they've got some great guys that understand our, our uh, lingo, our tuning softwares, and they know how to get in there and encrypt it and figure out, you know, what's, what's inside the computers. I was getting contacted by all kinds of, all kinds of folks um, trying to help. And everybody helped immensely. Uh, JH helped JH Diesel out of Florida. He helped me find an attorney that specialized in in uh, dealing with the EPA and all that stuff. And uh, that guy went to work. It uh, I, all our fans kind of jumped in and, and helped us get that going because I don't think I've dealt with some shops the last year or so that um, have got these letters and they just literally closed the doors. They don't have a support group like all our fans and all our friends and YouTube. YouTube has literally saved my business, saved my butt, and I can't thank everybody enough. It's honestly been incredible and humbling, and it's why I work so hard and I don't slow down and I try to, you know, try to make everybody proud. I wanna, you know, I really love this industry and the people in it and the sport, and I'm, I'm trying to keep that level going. Um, I'd like to see my kids do it. I'd love to see, you know, everybody's kids kind of grow up into it. You know, the game has definitely changed and I don't think enough people know. And it's, it's crazy because literally I, I pounded it um, on everybody for a year, year and a half, you know, nonstop RPM Act. And the RPM Act doesn't, doesn't save any streetcars. There is nothing out there right now that'll save any streetcar from being modified. I don't know if people have looked into this, but any modifications you do with a car with a license plate, they EPA deems it illegal, and it, and and they can 
I mean, they'll throw the extent of the law at you. I mean, and they don't, you know, their pockets are deep. So business-wise, you know, we had to cut all of, all of that out. You know, I've said it to other guys, but, you know, we could be the last generation of, of racers and guys doing this stuff. You know, as these newer cars come out, ECUs are more locked up. So no matter what, you'll have to go to stand alone. Um, the engine tech, you know, things aren't built as strong as those mid years of, of stuff. So, you know, it's, it's all of that too and trying to make it all work. And, uh, and as we go, you know, all the, all the race stuff that we do now, all these little Honda engines or, or even the domestic V8 stuff, all that stuff's gonna start going through the roof and getting super expensive. It's gonna be really hard to do this stuff because the stuff's starting to go away, you know? Um, like I said, there's been an agenda. It started with cash, with cash for clunkers and getting all those good parts off the road and all that good stuff. And, uh, and here we go. We're, you know, it's one administration to the next, just the domino effect of um, pushing the gas engine out or the fuel engines out. Um, I believe they have a place and um, I think if people really were educated on, on climate and how this stuff actually works, the, alarm, the alarmism wouldn't be there. I'm not a climate denier that it's not warming up, um, but at the same time, I think we're all pretty, pretty smart and it's been warming up for a lot of years and I'm, I'm pretty sure most of us know this. Um, I don't believe a bunch of race car guys are, are the problem or the, the big polluters. Biofuels burn clean and the whole point of a race engine is to burn as clean and as efficient as possible so we can make as much power and our stuff runs at short bursts and for minimum time. Um, so, the, you know, if there was charts on, on, you know, who's putting CO2 in the air, I, I'd still look at the guys that are pushing on us and, and their little jets and all the stuff they're about rather than us, you know. Yeah, since they sent us the letter in 2021, um, like I said, they, they hammered on me hard for months. Um, I got a great lawyer and he, he was really worked hard. It has not been a cheap endeavor whatsoever. And without our YouTube fans helping, there's no way I, I could have ever managed it. It would have never happened. Um, but since then, he's been, he's been mediating between the two of us. Uh, we had to provide some other documentation on some other products we sold since then. And uh, they have that stuff. And then it was probably, I, I probably didn't hear from them for probably almost a year. And then I got another letter that said they wanted all my, all my tunes, all my programs, anything I've wrote, anything that I have in my laptop. Um, so, you know, I provided it. I mean, it, the lawyer said, told me that was the best thing to do at that time. So, you know, I, I went through them all and I provided, you know, all the tunes to them. And that's where I've been on hold. So could they show up tomorrow? Could I get a letter anytime? Yeah, I haven't heard it's done. I haven't heard anything's over. Um, I still feel like it's, you know, right there all the time. Um, we are very critical on what we bring into the yard, the shop, because we don't know if they just roll in. Um, it's been a thing, you know. We've put cameras up, fences up, gates up. Um, just so, you know, if the squad comes in, we can at least try to buy ourselves a minute or something, you know, have a warrant, something. We're just not sure. I have no idea where it'll go. No idea. You know, that's probably the hardest part because this is what I do. This is my passion. This is what I love. Um, I've never made a whole bunch of money doing this. Like I, I squeak by, I, but I love it. I, I, I'm invested in it. I think it's, uh, it's, one of the best things I've ever done. I've, I've inspired so many people, I've made so many friends, and, and that's how I got rich. That, and that's the, that was the best thing I've ever done, honestly. And, uh, and then now, working with my boys here, I love for them to carry it on. My, my son Shane, you know, he knows where everything is. Uh, he, it's, like, it's like they graduated school and just knew how all this worked. You know, I, I never pushed it on them, and you know, they could do anything they wanted here, but 
they had their own things they were into and when they came to the shop you know they just knew how it all worked and they've really been inspiring to watch as well and both my boys feeding on each other is just probably one of the the best things I see every day and it makes me so proud that I I, I did something right you know in that in that regard um, and that's why I've swung so hard um, and trying to get the, the RPM act to go you know that was that's that was my uh, you know if we can make that work then the business will always work it will always be protected this this will help us well I, I I think it was beginning of this year, January, or February, somewhere in there, but we found out it, it failed. It did not go through the RPM Act. It is, you know, it's, it's like start a square one again. The RPM Act is a bill that was designed to protect us for using engines that came from cars with VIN numbers and allowing us to turn cars that had VIN numbers into race cars. That's, that's what it, <laughs> that's all it is it's a protection it's a blanket protection for that stuff is you know so you don't have to build a tube chassis car with a full billet engine or after you know total aftermarket everything um, that's what the RPM Act was meant to do is just protect that stuff it does not do anything for the street guy for the weekend warrior anybody that wants to you know throw a set of headers on your car or a quick little tune you know pep up your car a little bit you know we talk so freely about it all the time online we recommend tuners and all of it is they could come at us at any time you know I don't know what even you know I, I've had fears of them just showing up to racetracks and walking down the thing and seeing who has license plates you know I mean what would stop them yeah if you're modifying your street car it is totally illegal if you plug into the OBD2 port and you change uh, your speedometer because you put some aftermarket wheels on there. That's illegal. That's, that's a $4,000 fine. This is not just in Colorado or California or Florida or anywhere else. This is federally. This is the entire United States. You're modifying your car. They can come at you. I'm really passionate about trying to save this industry. I really want to see my boys carry this on, um, go as far as they can. You know, I, I believe one day these little front wheel drives, you'll see them running six second quarter miles and I think, you know, they could do it. But to be able to do it, we have to save an industry. We have to change an industry. We have to change the mindset of how people are seeing our industry. We need the right folks to come together and maybe you in the comments, maybe you're the right folks. Um, just because you're watching this video doesn't mean you can't stand up and be part of what we're all doing and that's, that's the biggest thing. We need all you guys. We need all you guys watching this video to stand up with us. You know, I, I don't know, like I said, I've done so many shows and all these young kids, and I, they, they just want to do this and, and it won't be here when they're older. Not unless we do something. So now's the time. Um, you know, I, I, I huge shout out to 1320 for doing this video and bringing this all back up. And because uh, this is, it's been tough. It's tough for a lot of businesses out there that have closed because of this. And don't say anything because of fear or embarrassment. Don't be, don't be scared. Don't be, don't have fear in your heart. Just stand up and do it. If you're a big company in the performance industry and you're not standing up, your days are limited. Stand up now. Get with us. Make something happen. We need, we need your dollars as much as ours to do all this to to fight these this bureaucracy combined the community could do something really beautiful really amazing and uh, make make racing great again <laughs>